Call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Ellsworth City Council, Monday, April 20th, 2015, 7 o'clock. All councillors present, with the exception of Councillor Phillips, and um, we wish him a speedy recovery. He's absent due to illness tonight. <coughs> well, what illness was that? I'm not at liberty to say. I'm not a, I'm not a medical professional. <laughs> It has something to do about the chicken crossing the road. It had something to do with that. That's all I heard. And we invite you to stand with us as we do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Item 3, Rules of Order. The council meetings are uh, conducted under the Roberts Rules of Order and uh, other rules that were adopted at the November 2014 Organizational Meeting of Council. Item number four, adoption of the Ellsworth City Council minutes from the following meetings. February 27, 2015, special meeting. March 13, 2015, special meeting. March 16, 2015, regular meeting. And April 3, 2015, special meeting. Council, what is your... Mr. Pleasure. Chairman, move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carried. Item five, city manager's reports. Welcome, Mr. Cole. It's good to have you at the end of the table. And uh, we'll open it up for anything that you'd like to report on for us. Well, I'll be very brief. Uh, it's springtime. The snow is gone, I think. And uh, the harbor is opening up May 15th. Also, uh, Knowlton Park construction is underway again. Uh, we originally hoped to uh, be complete by the 4th of July, but as everyone knows, it was a particularly long and harsh winter, so understandably, construction is being pushed back to August 1. Uh, during this time, as much as possible, they want to keep the park area open, the jump playground for the children. Uh, however, this is uh, adjacent to an active construction site, so the children must stay away from the construction area, the construction equipment. This is very important. It's a safety issue. Uh, be mindful of that. Uh, also, I'd point uh, the public to the Facebook site for the city for reminders on this because it could change over time. Parking on site will not be allowed during this time. However, parking is available on 3rd Street, State Street, and Shore Road for the public. Uh, that's all I had, Mr. Chair. Other than uh, I, I've enjoyed my stay here very much and enjoyed working with the council and the fine staff here at the city. Thank you. Well, we've enjoyed having you, and looks like we may have you for a little while longer, so don't plan to take anything else on for a bit. <laughs> Uh, Council, any questions uh, regarding the report or any questions to the manager? Item number six. Thank you, sir. Item number six, committee reports. Uh, any councillors have uh, reports from committees they may have attended since last meeting? Councillor Moore. <coughs> well, the Harbor Commission met back in early April. Uh, and as the manager reported, the the harbor is going to open again this year. Uh, there's been some uh, interest in from people uh, to rent some slips, and uh, they, there's still a, a few spaces available on the floating docks and for mooring slips. But it, uh, after this long winter, I think we anticipate uh, an active an active summer if the weather cooperates. Um, there is a, a small problem with one of the new pilings that, that we put in. It's kind of listing a little bit. So we may end up having to uh, uh, use uh, mooring blocks to uh, keep it in place, uh, one of the uh, slips in, in place. Um, there's uh, money available in the reserve account. Um, and the, uh, the highway department is going to uh, make some improvements in the uh, area that connects the former uh, wastewater treatment plant 
to the to the rest of the harbor. They, they kind of remove one of the knolls, and with remaining money, <coughs> we're going to start taking a look at the uh, left side of the parking lot on the, on the side of the uh, uh, whatever that building is, medical Need building. Yeah. What is it? Health healthcare building. Healthcare building, uh, and the goal is to uh, eventually. Uh, significantly increase the number of parking spaces down there. Um, we're still waiting to hear back on on uh, having a kayak rack uh, attached to the back of the uh, Harbor Master, Masters building. Uh, part of the money has already been donated and we're looking for more donations to uh, complete that. And that's just about it. Thank you. Any other committees reporting tonight? Councilor Blanchett. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, I attended the Ellsworth Public Library Collection Development Policy uh, of the Special Collections Committee on Saturday morning. Uh, it's a committee formed to handle the collections that they have, such as the Alvin S. Whitmore Collection for Genealogy and the Main Reference Collection where they're going to store it, how they're going to catalog it, um, how they'll make it available to the public, and whether it will be in digital form or in the original form, that will depend on the rarity of the piece. Um, nothing has been decided. It's an ongoing uh, issue, uh, and we'll see what uh, can be done for humidity control and to increase uh, current space uh, through digitalization, digitizing. Okay. Thank you. Pastor Fortier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Rec Commission met the first of the month, um, reviewed once again our budget. Um, we're all set with presentation to the council when that time comes. Um, we talked about projects for the spring. Um, we're having uh, a work be at uh, DeMeyer Complex. Uh, the exact date hasn't been settled yet, but all members will get an email on that. I was approached uh, middle of last week by a bunch of uh, young gentlemen that really wanted to play basketball. So. I called their bluff and said, Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, come on up the courts, we'll put up the sound curtains and uh, we'll open it up. Be a son of a gun if every one of them didn't show up. <laughs> um, the courts are open, uh, sound curtains are up, um, uh, trash can is going up if not already there, porta potty's going up very soon, um, and it's raining. So uh, that's going to keep the use down a little bit. and. Uh, the good news is that Ellsworth has landed, and I, I'm going to badger this really bad. I don't remember what age group, but um, state little league uh, tournament, tournament for this late spring, early summer. So they're really excited about that. They're going to really spiff up D1 and D2 area for that. Um, so there'll be more coming from uh, Rec Commission on that. But uh, spring has sprung, and we're out to play. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other committees? Councilor Perkins. Um, thank you. I've been attending the Ellsworth School Department's new uh, visioning committee. So they are in the process of putting together um, a new mission and vision for um, the coming uh, or the future, I guess, um, indefinite future. Uh, so the last couple of meetings, we've been engaged in putting together stakeholder groups um, and developing a plan for how we want to reach out to different stakeholders. Uh, we have a lot of really interesting um, ideas for what we want our school to look like um, as we move forward. And so I don't know the exact specifics of how we're doing that outreach at this point, but I do want everyone to listening to be aware that you may be solicited. And um, if you aren't, um, you probably ought, and you have something you'd like to contribute to, to certainly reach out um, and get your ideas um, heard about how you'd like our school to be moving mm. forward. Um, so stay tuned for more on that. Great. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. One last. Um, next Thursday night, uh, the 30th, at 6.30 upstairs in the auditorium, 
the League of Towns, which Ellsworth is a member of, um, have invited uh, our Senator Langley and the three representatives from League of Town communities uh, to a sit-down meeting to discuss issues um, as they're going into their final months of voting. Um, this was a project that former Manager Beal was interested in doing, and she asked me to continue it. Uh, we're in hopes that next year uh, we'll get on top of this and get it in January when their, their scheduling calendars aren't full. But it's an opportunity that's been very successful in other areas of the state of Maine uh, for the local uh, municipal leaders to sit down with uh, senators and representatives and go over issues. So uh, it is open to the public. There may be a quorum of city councilors there. No uh, business will be acted upon. Uh, there may be a quorum of Bar Harbor Town councilors there. Um, so the, as I said, the public is invited to attend. They probably won't be allowed to participate, but they can observe because uh, it is a League of Town meeting. Just to let people know. Thank you. Councilor Beetham. Uh, the the in-house staff uh, meeting on fireworks. Uh, we've had three meetings um, over the past few months, and after those three meetings, we found no uh, fair and equitable way to make changes to what there is right now because we really don't know what all the problems are. We're recommending uh, that we that the existing uh, fireworks. Uh, ordinance right now be <coughs> left in place for one year and then look at af look at it after one year. That's a recommended recommendation. If you'd like to have it uh, come to the council as as a report, it will do so. But if not, that's what uh, the committee would like to say. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you for taking that on. By the way, any other committees or actions? This is great. All right, we'll move on to item seven, <coughs> citizens' comments. Uh, this is an uh, opportunity for citizens who may uh, address the council on issues that are pertinent to tonight's agenda or any other issues that may be of concern to you. And uh, all we ask is that you uh, come to the podium and state your name for the record and then let us know what your concern is. Any takers tonight? Always that moment where nobody wants to move. But seeing none, I'll presume that uh, there are no comments tonight. Item number eight, presentation of awards. First award is to Mr. Larry Gardner. Thank you for being here tonight. City of Ellsworth proudly presents this certificate of service to Larry Gardner in recognition of your 15 years of service as city assessor for the city of Ellsworth. Your devotion to duty and loyalty to the community have contributed to the improvement of the city of Ellsworth. Presented this 20th day of April, 2015. Signed by David Cole, interim city manager, and Heidi Noel Grindle, city clerk. Larry, thank you for all the dedicated uh, efforts that you've made on behalf of the city, and a lot of good improvements, and you're still with it. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> and next, Amanda Tupper. City of Ellsworth proudly presents this certificate of service to Amanda Tupper in recognition of your five years of service to the City of Ellsworth in your various capacities from Assistant City Clerk. Administrative Program Coordinator, Deputy City Clerk, to your current position as Tax Collector. Your devotion to duty and loyalty to the community have contributed to the improvement of the City of Ellsworth. Presented this 20th day of April, 2015, signed by David Cole, Interim City Manager, and Heidi Grindle, City Clerk. Amanda, looks like you've been busy for five <laughs> years, and uh, we know that not only have you had a lot of these responsibilities, but you've taken every one of them on very seriously and done a great job. And we thank you and we congratulate you. <laughs> this many penny. <laughs> and this is Penny Weinstein. Proudly, the city of Elton proudly presents this certificate of service to Penny Weinstein and 
recognition of your five years of service as administrative assistant to the city manager for the city of Ellsworth. Your devotion to duty and loyalty to the community have contributed to the improvement of the city of Ellsworth. Presented this 20th day of April 2015, uh, signed Michelle H. Beal, city manager, and Heidi Grindo, city clerk. Penny, before she left. There you go. <laughs> um, we, we're, uh, we're thankful not only for what you do in your job description, but all those other things you do for the city that I don't know if they're in the job description. <laughs> but your extra hours and things that you take on as projects. And uh, we have the Southern Bells that should have been mentioned in this too. So uh, just thank you thank from you. all of us here at City Hall. And uh, congratulations on five years. Thank you. Next, please, Chief Coleman is going to come and start us off here. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the City Council, City Manager. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I'm here to uh, bring to your attention uh, um, some efforts from Sergeant Sean Willie that I, I think were uh, outstanding. Um, I know we're living in a day and age where you see a lot of negative things about our profession on, on the TV news, and it's not all bad. There are some things that need to be corrected in our profession, but uh, I think tonight's example will let you know that uh, there's a lot of good going on as well. So. You have to bear with me. I forgot my reading glasses in the police department, so I'll do my best. <laughs> on March 9, 2015, Sergeant Willie and several other officers responded to a residence on State Street after a 911 call which was, uh, was received. The caller indicated that a 40-year-old female was unresponsive on the front steps of the apartment. Upon arrival, Sergeant Willie checked for signs of life, while the other officers stabilized the situation and secured the apartment. It was a complicated call, a lot of issues to be addressed. All the officers that responded that night did an outstanding job. Uh, along with Sergeant Willie, Sergeant Moser responded, Officer Gilway, and Officer Wilmot. Uh, they had their hands filled, to say the least. But while the officers were uh, going about their business, Sergeant Willie uh, checked for signs of life on the victim. He started immediately administering CPR until emergency medical services arrived. Once EMS arrived, they were able to revive the female who had overdosed on illicit drugs. Sergeant Willie provided life-saving life -saving medical intervention and played an important role in saving the woman's life. In doing so, he displayed the adherence to our core values of community service and professionalism. So with that, I'd like to have him come up. Would you stand over there by the chairman? <coughs> you take just a minute and introduce uh, your girlfriend who's here with you. Uh, Jamie Lalbert. Welcome. Glad to have you here tonight. And with that, sir, I'll, I'll hand it to you. Thank you, Chief. This is a letter of commendation. The Ellsworth Police Department proudly presents this certificate to Sergeant Sean Willie. In recognition of your quick action and exemplary dedication in the administration of life-saving medical intervention, which played an important role in the saving of a life. Your actions and integrity are a credit to the Ellsworth Police Department and indicative of a strong commitment to the department's core values of community service and professionalism. Presented this 20th day of April, 2015, signed Christopher Coleman, Chief of Police, Ellsworth Police Department, and Robert Crossway, Chairman, Ellsworth City Council. And Sergeant Willie, we just want to uh, say not only congratulations, but we're proud uh, of your actions and we're proud to say that you are one of our finest and I want to just say on your behalf and on the Chief's behalf, thank you to all the other officers that are here tonight in support of Sergeant Willie. It means a lot for us to see you. I'm sure it means a lot to him as well. And so, Sergeant Willie. Thank you. presentation uh, and the recipient is not here tonight but I did uh, want to read this. The City of Ellsworth proudly presents this certificate of recognition to Jennifer Alexander in recognition of your service and dedication to the City of Ellsworth Recreation Commission. 
Your devotion and loyalty to the community have contributed to the improvement of the city of Ellsworth. And it's duly signed, and we're going to see that it's also delivered to, uh, to Jen Alexander and with thanks for her good service on the Recreation Commission. And with that, we are going to move on to the consent agenda. And we have five items uh, on the consent agenda tonight. Item 9, Council Order Number 041500 is request of the City Clerk for appointment of wardens and ward clerks for the four voting districts within the City of Ellsworth for the June 9, 2015 City of Ellsworth School Budget Validation Referendum Election. Item 10, Council Order Number 041501 request of the City Clerk for approval on setting the polling places opening time as 8 a.m. for the June 9, 2015 City of Ellsworth School Budget Validation Referendum Election. Item 11, Council Order Number 041502, appointment of James Barkhouse as an alternate planning board member with a term to expire on 6-30-2015. Item 12, <coughs> Council Order Number 041503, request of the tax collector to accept payments on tax acquired timeshare units per the attached spreadsheet and to authorize city manager to release said properties through municipal quick claim deeds. And item 13, Council Order Number 041504, request to the Recreation Commission to accept a resignation letter from Jennifer Alexander with a term to expire on June 30, 2015. Do any councillors wish to have any of these five items uh, removed and dealt with individually? Seeing none, we can uh, move, move the consent agenda as presented, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded that we accept consent agenda 9 through 13 as presented. Any question? Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That's unanimous. Moving to new business, number 14, public hearing and action on the issuance of business licenses. And the first one is Chummies LLC doing business as Chummies 59 Franklin Street Unit 2B for renewal of a City Class B license, amusement, liquor, and victualler, and renewal of a State Class A lounge, Class X uh, malt, spirituous, and vinous liquor license. Um, and we'll go to the public hearing. Open the public hearing. Is there any comment? From the public, I should check with the staff. If it, is everything okay with this? And have we heard anything different? No. Okay. Anyone wish to speak during the public hearing? I'll close the public hearing, and council action. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the request of Chummies LLC as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Next one is Charles B. and Ari L. Uh, L. Zucker doing business as Twilight Motel, 147 uh, Bucksport Road for renewal of a city lodging license. Any issues with that, staff? I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wish to comment on this license? <coughs> Seeing none, close the public hearing. And council action. Mr. Chairman, move the approval of uh, the request of Charles B. and Ariel, <coughs> Ariel and Zucker to a business's Twilight Motel for renewal of the city lot license. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's carried unanimously. Next one is <coughs> Ellsworth Moose Lodge, number 2698, 47 Foster Street. For renewal of a City Class B license, amusement, pool tables, liquor, and victualler, and reclassification of the existing State Class A lounge, Class X to a Club Class, uh, Class 10 to a Club Class 5, malt, spirituous, and vinous liquor license. Any issues, staff, with that? Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to comment on this application? See none. Close the public hearing. Move approved to the Mr. Chairman of the Eldridge Moose Lodge, 2698, as presented. Second. 
Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That's unanimous. Next is Asset Management Inc. doing business as Riverside Cafe, 151 Main Street, for an upgrade from a city victuallers, victuallers license to a new cla uh, city class B license, Victor Liquor and Amusement, and a new state restaurant, class one, two, three, and four, malt, spirituous, and Linus liquor license. Staff, any issues? <coughs> Anyone here tonight representing uh, Riverside Cafe, and could you state your name for the record? Robert Hamilton. Thank you, sir, for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll open the public hearing. Any um, comments or questions from the public on this application? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Council. Action. Mr. Chairman, move approval of Asset Management, Inc. as presented. Second. Move and second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Next one, B and B Burgers Inc. doing business as Fuddruckers, three six seven State Street, Suite A, for a new City Class C license, Victor and Liquor, and a new State Restaurant, Class Three and Four Malt and Vinous Liquor license. Staff, any issues? Any issues? Mr. Hengi. Should I just from here? Yes, sir. <laughs> Inspector Hengi with the Elder Fire Department. Um, at this time, we have not signed that license based upon the fact that the to all the equipment is not in place um, and some of the fire safety devices have not been installed yet. Um, the exhaust hood has not been put in yet. That's it's expected to be put in, possibly by the, everything should be in by the end of the week. Um, uh, we're just kind of hoping that that is what the case is. So at this time, we have not signed that license based on those issues, that it does not meet the 101 Life Safety Code or the Fire Prevention Ordinance requirements. Thank you. <laughs> Our intention tonight is to hold a public hearing and uh, we can issue the license you won't sign it, obviously, until the certificate of occupancy has, has been issued. No, sir. We can, we can actually sign it once the, those devices are in prior to the occupancy permit. Okay. okay. Sure. Anyone here tonight re representing B&B uh, &B Burgers, Inc.? And please state your name. Brad Holmes. Brad, thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate it. You're getting close. Getting, getting close. real close. Good. Um, okay, public hearing is open. Any comments from the public? Anyone like to uh, speak to this? Close the public hearing and council, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Fortier. So we don't lose our business friendly designation like South Portland. I would move <laughs> to uh, approve the application of B&B Burgers Incorporated DBA FUD records. Uh, as presented. Second. Move and second it. Any further discussion? Councilor Fortier. Mm -hmm. To me, Mr. Chairman, what that does is allows our staff to sign the application once it meets it without holding up the applicant for another meeting, allows him to get the license to Augusta and get it processed through them between signature and the CO and then everything flows right in together. I think uh, our inspection staff will take right care of it and, and uh, will do us, do us good and work with the applicant to make sure that his business survives. I agree. Uh, Councilor Beetham. Um, I agree, but I would like to see it stipulated in the motion that um, <coughs> the approval hinges on the, the signing off on all departments of the city so that Legally, if you pass it tonight without their signatures, you've still passed it. Councilor Forty. In the past, we've been advised by council, the ones we pay the big bucks do not, these folks, 
that we can't pass it with conditions, that we had to pass it and they he will not get a signed application to take to the state until he meets all the requirements. That's why I verbalized the way I did. We've done it in the past. Thanks for clarifying that. Anything further? I didn't know. Yep. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Granting the license. Those opposed? 5 1. Councilor Beetham opposes. And <coughs> the next item is the Eagles Lodge, Inc., 278 High Street, for renewal of a city lodging license. We'll open the public hearing. Anyone have comments or questions on this application? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Council. Move approval, Mr. Chairman, the Eagles Lodge, Inc. Second. Move and second it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Next is Brian Langley doing business as Union River Lobster Pot, 8 South Street for renewal of a city class C license, liquor and victualler, and renewal of a state restaurant class 1234 malt, spirituous, and vinous liquor license. And we'll open the public hearing. Anyone have comments, questions on this application? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and council. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> move the approval of uh, Union River Lobster Pot uh, renewal of their licenses. Second. Move and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. And I was remiss in not welcoming our Senator Brian Langley. We're glad you're here tonight. And I know you're here for business, yeah, but. You got that other hat on. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Other item uh, Ellsworth number one, LLC, doing business as Hampton Inn. Um, 6 Down East Highway, Ellsworth, for renewal of a city lodging license. Public hearing is open. <coughs> Any questions or comments on this application? Close the public hearing. And council action. Mr. Chairman, move approval of Ellsworth number one, LLC, DBA, the Hampton Inn, as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. And next one is Ellsworth RI LLC doing business as Ellsworth Ramada, 215 High Street for renewal of a city lodging license. Public hearing is open. Anyone wish to make comments or ask questions? Public hearing is closed. Council, your action. Mr. Chairman, move to approve Ellsworth RI LLC DBA Ellsworth Ramada for the new city lodging license. Second. Aye. Move and seconded. Any further discussion? That was renewal. I misspoke. It wasn't new. Renewal. Renewal. Anything further? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And all of you that came for these licenses, we appreciate your attendance tonight and all the best in the summer season. We'll move to item number 15, council order number 041505. Request the public works director to extend the contract for certain road striping services to Jordan Striping. Mr. Public Works Director, you have the podium. Yeah, again this year, uh, I went to the Jordan Striping. They came in with the same price as the last two years. Told us they'd do the same thing again. And that's why I didn't go out to bid. And I'm asking for your blessing tonight to award the Striping to Jordan's approximately $21,656.96. And that's the arrows and crosswalks and stuff, not the line striping on the urban compact. Okay. Has, has there been an, uh, much of a difference in, in the amount of paint that they're going to have to use again this year? It seems like we've got new things that 
need to be striped and so forth. What was that last bit? I mean, is there more work that that has to be done to fulfill this contract than in the past years because well, of the past two years we've been adding on, taking away, adding on, and taking away in kind of the urban compact. And hopefully this year we'll know what we're going to be doing <coughs> finally so we can get a dollar figure on the whole thing because all the things that some of it was under uh, construction isn't under construction yeah. anymore, so we'll be doing everything. Even State Street that's not under construction, we did that last year, we're going to have to do it this year. Beachland Road is going to have to be done this year because Jordan's did it last year and we didn't put the finish coat on, so that's going to be an extra, so instead of <coughs> them paying a striper to come down, we either use Lucas or we'll find another striper to come in and do it because it's just one day job on the Beachland Road. Um, I know it's in the packet, but I don't recall how it went. Do, does Jordan do the um, white lines along the right edge of the road? No, that's, that's, you, that's called your line stripe in the, yeah. the urban compact. Okay. They do like the, where the arrows are yeah. and the white lines along by the arrows and then they stop and then the other <coughs> contractor comes in and does them with his truck and goes down through. And whatever ones Jordan has, and if they get here first and they do some, washes back and forth. Yeah. Well, we didn't do a fall stripe in last year because we found they've lasted a lot better over them. Like right now, we'll touch them up again up on Marrick Street stuff where we use just salt, not salt sand. It doesn't wear them off so quick, so they actually last longer. Last fall, we didn't do any line striping or arrow striping. We saved uh, six, seven thousand dollars, I think it was. <coughs> Any other questions for Public Works <laughs> Director? Just one, Mr. <coughs> not not a, actually a question, but a concern. Um, mm -hmm. The last couple of years, when you're uh, headed down Route One and you get to the Myrick Street Route 1 intersection. Mm -hmm. You have two lanes going outbound, and we failed to put the solid divider on the other side of the intersection for 100 feet or whatever, and then go with the passing lines of the arrows. Right now, you've got people crowding trying to get two lanes into one without any direction. So I'd like you to put that in your mental file and see if we can at least get that back on there so people know what they're supposed to do up there. Not only that, if you see something like that, just bring it to my attention and yep. I'll get back to them that they didn't finish their job and they have to come back and finish it. Yeah. In putting forward a motion here, do we need the uh, amount, the the dollar amount and what account this is coming from or it's just a continuation of contract? No, it's unit price <coughs> on the on the motion on that thing. Yeah. that Okay. That was just a total dollar figure if we do just that, but we might have a few more arrows, we might have a few less arrows. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councilor Vito. Uh, move to approve the request of the Public Works Director to extend the agreement for arrows, lane designation, stop bars, crosswalk striping to Jordan striping at the unit prices as attached proposal. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 16, Council Order number 041506, request to the Public Works Director to extend the contract for center and sideline <coughs> striping to Lucas Striping LLC. Yes, again, the, the call of Lucas Striking, he agreed to um, do it for the same price he did last year. The only thing that might change is the, is the line distance. That's why we're going with the attached unit price is the same. Because, uh, as I say, we had construction going on. Some of the places we've done, and we have, we won't be doing this year. Some will be doing different ones. So until we get a complete dollar figure, we'll decide to find out the exact unit price. So I'm asking the council to bid the, award the bid to uh, Lucas Striping that's done it the past two years for us. 
Thank you. Councilor Fortier. Um, the wrong screen. Computers. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the request of the Public Works Director to extend the agreement for center line and sideline striping to Lucas Striping LLC. The unit price is per the attached proposal. Second. <coughs> Move and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Beetham. Yeah, I, I just had one question. It actually didn't have anything to do with the, the spring striping. Uh, are they available to come back if uh, we need striping uh, done <coughs> in the fall? Uh, especially the new new construction. New construction doesn't take paint very well sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if they would be available. Uh, they probably would be. But probably be a different price. They'll, they'll be traveling up from <laughs> southern part of Maine to come up here just to do a four or five hour job. Sometimes we can call Bangor somewhere and get somebody to come in and do something quick and easy. Okay. But they, it, he's been very accommodating, and I think it's not sure, but I think it's his son in law's taking over for him, and he's going to be in the background teaching him everything because he's eventually going to get out of it because he retired once already from the state. So. In striping. Moore. Uh, Mr. Wilson, I don't know if it's my eyes that are going bad. It's old age like I got. But um, is um, Lucas still putting reflective material in the paint? No, they don't. The reflective material that they put in the paint is usually on the, our arrows, our crosswalks, and our crossbars. Because um, to my eyes, it, it seems like for the last couple of years that the, uh, the the paint that's down seems to be rather dull. And I was thinking in the past that it used to be more reflective to drive, especially on a foggy night or something. Uh, so I'm just thinking that I. I wish that, it was. Is that just our street reflective. or is that going to Bangor and everywhere? Wherever I've been. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we only do so many streets. But, uh, it, I just, I, I've noticed that it does well, appear the, to be. The reflectance is just, is just beads that they put in anyway that they sprinkle down on the arrows and stuff. While they're wet. The paint itself isn't a reflective paint. Well, thanks for that information. Uh, <laughs> But in any case, uh, yeah. you know, after you reach a certain yeah, age, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I've passed that age, uh, How many you times? Know, <laughs> just once. We'll have to put a little bit of LED lights out on <coughs> his house out there. So really or perhaps we could get somebody with, a, with lanterns or something like that. But you know, on a, on a night like this, yeah. when it's a, a little bit wet out there, uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to see those sidelines especially. Gosh, I'd hate to have a utility pole. <laughs> but thanks for the information. We could ask you old folks home not to let you out at night. <laughs> I was going to make a suggestion. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Chief. <laughs> have these meetings in the daytime. <laughs> Anyone else? On this interesting topic. <laughs> Do we have a motion? Yes. yes. All those in favor? Please. <laughs> That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Item 17, <laughs> Council Order Number 041507. Request to the Finance Director for transfer of the defendants in REM criminal forfeiture. Document number CR 13-207 to the City of Ellsworth to allow the Finance Director to deposit these monies into the Police Forfeiture Reserve Account upon receipt of the funds. Good evening. The Good evening. The police department recently had a drug case at the Hampton Inn uh, where it resulted in the arrest and conviction of a man who had cash in his possession when the apprehension took place. Um, this money was turned over to the court system as part of the case. The assistant attorney general who was prosecuting the case has proposed that Ellsworth would receive $13,774 from the forfeiture. Uh, state law requires that before any forfeitable items can be transferred to the municipality, it is a requirement that the legislative body must accept the forfeited items. Um, this council order will allow me to deposit that money into the police forfeiture reserve account once those funds are received. Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman. Council Forty. Move to approve the request of the, for the transfer of the defendants in REM in case of State of Maine versus Jesse Evans Sawyer pursuant to 15 MRSA section 58224A and section 58243 to the City of Ellsworth and to allow the finance director to deposit these monies into the police forfeiture reserve account upon receipt of the funds. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Item 18, Council Order Number 041508, Request of the Finance Director for Transfer of Defendants in REM Criminal Forfeiture Document Number CR13-044 to the City of Ellsworth and to allow the Finance Director to deposit these monies into the Police Forfeiture Reserve Account upon receipt of the funds. We had another drug case which involved the trafficking of drugs and this resulted in an arrest and conviction of a man who had cash and a 2007 Cadillac <coughs> when the apprehension took place. Um, the Assistant Attorney General is once again has proposed that because it was a joint effort between MDEA and the Ellsworth Police Department that they would split their forfeitures where the city would receive the Cadillac and MDEA would uh, receive the money. Um, so again, we're asking um, to accept this and Chief Coleman has expressed his interest to use the vehicle as a trade-in on the 2016 vehicles um, that are being proposed in the 2016 budget. I don't like an interesting I, split. I, I, I don't know. I, I think for, for a day he ought to have his pearl handle revolvers in the Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> Smoky and the bandit. <laughs> <laughs> well, where is this Cadillac being housed currently? It's a uh, it's an Ian Pound yard at the, the sheriff's office, and they they would like to get uh, rid of it. Uh, once we secure your approval, we'll have to apply for title through the state, and once that happens, we can we can take possession of it. Yeah, I I was thinking that <laughs> we may have been remiss in not providing an automobile for the uh, chief to use and travels from Surrey <laughs> back here and uh, you know perhaps we could uh, look into this and, <laughs> and make that the travel car. Perhaps. What color is it? <laughs> I believe it's a nice looking charcoal gray. Well it's all right. You'd be envy of the main chiefs association. <laughs> 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 I would agree with this, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it was, it's a pretty good swap there. I'd be much more comfortable in the narrative if we didn't have the words, the joint effort. Oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we word that somewhat differently. My bad. Group out. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the request of the transfer of the defendants in REM in case of State of Maine versus Mark Briggs, pursuant to 15 MRSA Section 5822. 4A and Section 58243 to the City of Ellsworth. Second. Move and second. Any further discussion? Thank you for getting this moving along, Council, for you. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> and that's unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you, Finance Director Moat. Number 19, Council Order Number 041509, request of the tax collector to award bids for tax acquired property. Uh, so last month we um, went out to bid for 91 timeshare units that we foreclosed on in December. I got six bids back. All of them had the temp required 10% down check, uh, but if you do notice that there was actually two bids on one timeshare unit, so I have to go with the highest bidder on that one. Um, so I'm just requesting uh, that we accept the bids and uh, quit claim these deeds. One question, Mr. Sure, go ahead. Um, have we checked with the Crowley? Does she want both of them? <coughs> she does not want both okay, of them. Okay, so one of them she'll take? Yes. Okay, do we know which one? 30E. Okay. And, and I did not check with Justin Pelletier. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure if he's going to go with both of them, but I have been in, in contact with Nina, and she's going to take the 30E one. Any other questions? My only comment on this is that, and uh, Amanda and I have talked about this, but I think as we go into the new fiscal year, we really need to look at some way to address this. It's getting really out of hand, the numbers of units that we're talking here, and it just keeps growing. And there's, I don't know what the, the answer, I don't have the solution, but there's got to be one. There's got to be something that we can do to, to uh, remediate this and make it somebody else's problem and not ours. Isn't there an outfit out there that comes in and mass buys these to get them out of our pockets and back on the tax rolls? Yeah, there are different I mean, companies I, out there that advertise, it, it, yeah. I can't see any reason why we wouldn't sell for whatever we could get and mm -hmm. get them back on the tax rolls. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. We need to find a solution. And I know you've been working on yeah. finding a solution and all kinds of different ways that we can make this thing uh, go away. But mm -hmm. We're not there yet. We need to keep at it. So. I'll keep you guys posted on whatever I find out. All right. Maybe yeah. possible solutions. That'd be great. Mr. Mr. Cole. And I'm no expert on this by any means, but I understand that there's a pretty strong secondary market for timeshares mm -hmm. uh, out there. So I think you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. I think so. Well, I'll entertain a motion on item number 19. Mr. Chairman, move to approve council order number 041509, the request of the tax collector to accept the bids from the highest bidders as indicated above, uh, and to release said properties through quick claim deeds. Um, I don't know if I should add something to that, knowing that one or two of these may not be taken, or can we just what, What's the it? total number that we're we would be dealing with? Six total. Six. So I'll amend that to include Minus six. Yep, so um, five total will actually be quit claim deed, deeded back. I'm not sure about Justin Pelletier, though. He did vote on, he, he bid on two. Okay. So. So, so I'll say the, the motion is good. Second. All right. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous vote. Thank you. And then um, item number 20, council order number 041510, request the tax collector to offer for sale by public sale timeshare units located at Acadia Village Resort, acquired by non-payment of real estate taxes. And there's a complete list available at the city clerk's mm -hmm. office. And back to you. Sure. So. Um, Taking away the six that were bid on, that leaves us 85 left. So that's the list that you guys have. Uh, I will add that one back on as soon as Nina rejects it. Um, so what I'm requesting is authorization to sell the remaining timeshare units for a fixed price on a first come, first serve basis. The properties in proposed sale prices are detailed um, in your attachment. The proposed pricing captures all taxes, interest, and lien costs due recording and transfer fees, advertising costs, and additional revenue for the city. The additional $100 that I've added is reflected in the prices that are listed on, on the bid sheet. So I'm just requesting to go to public sale for the remaining timeshare units. Any questions on that? Mr. Chairman, move to approve Council Order 041510, request of the tax collector to offer for sale by public sale all timeshare units per the attached document. Second. Move and second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. And item 21, Council Order number 041511. Request the finance director to expend an amount not to exceed $5,000 for the construction of the police department interview room to be funded from the police equipment replacement capital improvement account. 
So during the 2015 budget, the city council had appropriated $11,000 for the purchase of some tasers and a new computer for the cruiser. Um, we've already purchased the tasers. However, we still would need to buy a computer. We've talked to the technology coordinator and he has said that we would not need a computer this year. So that account right now has a balance of $5,000. Chief Coleman has um, expressed his interest in using that $5,000 uh, remaining balance to construct an interview room. I will defer to him in just a moment and have him explain the need for this interview room. Um, per the procurement policy, anything <coughs> under $10,000 is privy, uh, to, to be approved by the city manager. However, because we're changing the use or reallocating funds for another purpose, that's why I'm bringing it to council for <coughs> approval. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> when the police department was moved from one side of City Hall back in the late 90s, I believe, to uh, where it is now. There was an interview room on, in the floor plan. Uh, interviewing is essential to any police department, and the setting of an interview is uh, about 50% of the interaction. Uh, it allows for privacy and allows for the training that the officers go through uh, to get people to talk about certain things um, to be successful. What's happened since we moved into the police department, we've, quite frankly, we've outgrown it. Uh, the interview room that was on the blueprints is now an office. So the officers, uh, when they do bring somebody into the police department, they, they try to do an interview in the squad room, which has uh, the wrong setting. Uh, or they take over somebody's office, uh, which is still the wrong setting. Um, the other alternative is to interview people in a lobby, which doesn't, uh, in my mind, doesn't allow for the, the proper privacy for the members of the public that have to be there to, to talk about their concern. So the proposal is to try to, um, and it's not a perfect, certainly not a perfect uh, plan uh, to take the existing lobby and to put a partition wall um, which would allow for just the, the public to have a small uh, area to approach dispatch, but the remainder of the lobby would be used for an interview room and a storage closet. Uh, we don't expect the cost to be uh, any, f any greater than 5000 uh, We've had the fire department check out the the plan and uh, with the right accommodations it will work without any issues with that uh, with fire protection. Any questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, um, you and I had a conversation about this earlier in the month and, and I would you allude to the importance of having that interview room in a position where the person you're interviewing knows that they're just a step away from outdoor, that they're not being trapped inside of the back office through six hallways? Sure. Uh, in the police world, interviewing can take anything from interviewing a child who's lost to, uh, we had a, an elderly woman in there uh, this week that was, was lost. Um, so just from the terms of privacy, uh, for anybody that has a concern, I think it's extremely important that victims have a place that they can relate their concern without being overheard in the, in the city hall. That's the first dynamic. Second one is when you're interviewing a suspect in a criminal investigation, uh, there's a uh, custody is very important. In other words, if you're being interviewed by the police, what's in your head about are you free to leave or not is extremely important. And there's a lot of conditions on, on that. So having the interview room in the lobby uh, right off the main door um, helps explain to a reasonable person that they, they are free to leave. They don't have to find their way out of a, a maze of doors and locked uh, keypads to get out. Uh, they can just leave the door from the door they came in. So it, it's, it's, like I said, it's not perfect. It's going to make that lobby awful small, uh, but it's the best of uh, the condition that we have. Thank you. Uh, Chief, is they taking special pains to put extra soundproofing in to help yeah. make it more private? Yeah, the, uh, the figure that you have before you allows for uh, uh, rock sill insulation in the, in the interior walls, which is uh, it's very dense uh, residential insulation, but it, it does offer some soundproofing. Uh, and I believe there's enough money there for um, the door that's currently in the lobby that goes into the police department is going to be moved to the, the, the door that goes into the interview room. And for uh, a normal fee, we can find a door kit, a soundproofing kit for the door. So we're going to start with that uh, to see if that works. I also have, uh, through some burn JAG grant money, I have uh, about uh, 
$1,500 available to uh, outfit that room with a video and audio recording system. Great. Chief Coleman, will there still be enough room in the new lobby for furniture for people to sit down at uh, if necessary? It's tight. There is, I think there's room for one chair uh, between where the door opens uh, and the new wall. There's room for one chair. My, my vision is to keep the chairs out in the main hallway of the city hall but also allow people to come in to the interview room when it's not being used and wait for an officer there. Um, it's, again, it's not perfect, but I think we can make the best of it. Uh, interviewing is extremely important to what we do. I think, it's, I think it's so important that we need to try to make the best of it and put this in. Any other questions or comments? This is good. Um, entertain a motion. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, move to approve the request of the finance director to expend an amount not to exceed not to exceed five thousand dollars on the construction of the police department interview room. The amount is to be funded from the police equipment replacement capital improvement account. Second. Move and second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Item 22, Council Order Number 041512, request of the Finance Director to withdraw $2,500 from the federally forfeited property reserve account for a match to the Bureau of Highway Safety Equipment Grant <coughs> to purchase of uh, two radars and one cruiser camera. So the police department has been awarded a $10,000 grant from the Bureau of <coughs> Highway Safety Equipment for the purchase of a cruiser video camera system and two radar units. What the um, police department would like to do is use the 25% match and use it from the federally forfeited um, reserve account. Uh, currently there is $4,086 and after we receive the money um, from the defendants in REM case, we would increase that by almost fourteen thousand dollars. Questions, comments. So technically, it's a seventy-five hundred dollar grant. Correct, but they consider it ten thousand yeah. dollars with okay. twenty-five percent match. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of talk lately about like body cameras and moving toward that. I wonder what the difference is or if you have any insight about a cruiser camera versus a body camera. <coughs> yeah, there's, uh, the cruiser camera is a different application. Uh, every cruiser in the fleet is equipped with a, a camera to pick up. Uh, they're, they're made to go on when the lights, uh, the blue lights go on. And actually there's, a, there's kind of a buffer where you can actually, rec it's recording all the time. The new cameras are recording all the time and you set your time parameters. So if if you see an accident in front of you and you turn your blue lights on, it's probably going to capture, record the accident you saw before you turn your blue lights on. So all the cameras, all the cruisers in the, in the fleet need to have cameras. The body cameras are something totally different. Um, they're small devices that are worn either on a lapel or a pocket, and they go with the officer. Currently, the main chiefs are looking at the issue of body cameras. There's a lot of different things that need to be resolved as far as policy and procedure before we, we commit to the purchase of body cameras. Um, a lot of privacy issues that um, I think they can be resolved, but I wanted to wait to see what the main chiefs came up with for a model policy. They're currently working on it in committee. Um, I expect there'll be a draft in the next six months, um, and they'll tackle all those issues. Uh, it's not so much what the officer sees, but we, we get, uh, because of what we do, there are times when we may have a recording of things that aren't law enforcement related, but they're now in possession of a government entity. So all those issues need to be kind of address before we, we go forward with that. Thank you. I also wanted to add the Bureau of Highway Safety is anticipating that this program is going to be an annual uh, grant and would require that match every year. Chief Coleman has added it into his 2016 budget for review from the council. What is, another question I guess, 
what is the status? Do we have um, cameras in all the cruisers currently, or are we? Do we need to? <laughs> we do. Uh, all the current, all the cruisers are in the fleet now do have cameras. Uh, there are, I think, there are four left of the, the old style. They're, um, they store the images or the recordings on uh, DVDs. Uh, the new cameras have thumb drives. So th the purchase of this camera will help. Um, we'd still be a couple short of the new ones, but it would certainly help upgrade the fleet of, of cameras. Mm -hmm. Storage is a huge issue for these recordings. They're very large files. So the thumb drives make it a lot easier for us to retrieve and store the data. And so the anticipation is that in the next year we'll replace, we'll sort of phase out those over the next four years or so. Highway Safety has always had uh, an equipment grant. This is the very first year they're using this format. That's why it wasn't budgeted for in the past. Um, uh, this year, and I think every year subsequent to this, they, they produce a list of vendors that you can buy equipment from, and they stipulate what types of equipment you can buy from it. Uh, in the past, they would go out and purchase the equipment after serving police chiefs and departments throughout the state and purchase a, a bulk. Uh, what, it might be all radars or it might be all cameras, and then those would be available for, for departments. But um, So we were presented with a list of vendors and the different types of items that we could purchase from the grant money. Yes. Will your new Cadillac have a camera? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to have pearl handle grip revolvers, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chief, in this it, it, it rapidly advancing age of technology, I think it's going to be interesting in the future to see what new attachments an officer will have to wear on his on his uniform as he goes about the, the job. I can't help but notice that it seems to be a pretty full belt that you guys wear, and mm -hmm. perhaps right. you'll need some bandoleros or something. To <clears throat> I don't think I'm that old of a person. When I started in 89, I was issued a, a notebook and a pen. Yeah. Oh. And a bullet. <laughs> and a bullet, yeah. Mm -hmm. But things have gotten uh, really complicated. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. We may think of something in a little bit. <laughs> okay, ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, go for it. Move to approve the request of the finance director to withdraw $2,500 from the federally forfeited property reserve account for a match to the Bureau of Highway Safety Equipment Grant to purchase two radars and one cruiser camera. Second. Moved and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Which brings us to item number 23, Council Order number 041513, request to accept a proposal from Starboard Leadership Consulting Group, LLC, for the facilitation services and development of visioning and goal setting project uh, established by the Council. I think we have uh, talked about this in finance committee, and uh, everybody should have a copy, should have had a copy of the uh, proposals, and um, the, the everybody scored, I think, or pretty much everybody scored. Five, five councils five, five scored. Five scored on these uh, proposals, <clears throat> with, the, uh, with the top bid being Starboard Leadership Consulting. <coughs> And this is something I think they're ready to get going on as soon as we give them the words. Councilor Fortier. So be said, resolved to accept the RFP from Starboard Leadership Consulting Group, LLC, to be the facilitators of the visioning goal setting project for an amount not to exceed 21500 This project will be funded from fund balance. Second. Moved and seconded. <coughs> Any questions, any discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> That's unanimous. I want to thank you, Council, for your support of that. I look forward to the, some good work uh, going forward on this one. For complete public discussion, this is a wholly owned subsidiary of the people that just stole our city manager. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let's reconsider. In the, in, <laughs> yeah. In the interest of uh, transparency. And item 24. 
So moved, adjournment. Second. All those in favor? And we're adjourned. Thank you. Good job.